A lot of people opt for the barbell curl as an option to train biceps and the other elbow flexors, but today we're gonna go over why that might be a problem and then what you could do instead with cables or with dumbbells if you don't have access to cables. So first things first, the barbell is a fixed implement, which basically means that when you pick it up, your hands are stuck in a position, right? You gotta grab the bar. And so in this case, my hands and my palms are really facing toward the camera. And at the top of the motion, when I come to the top of the curl, they gotta kind of face upward, right? Otherwise there's gonna be rotational force created on my forearm. So that's probably problem number one is really like, if you don't have the motion in your forearm to be able to turn your palm in this direction, well then there's gonna be kind of twisting force up toward your elbow, which you know may not feel good at your elbow or even your wrist. So that's problem one. Problem two, elbows naturally move a little bit into out, right? Even if you are the most narrow person, your elbows will probably bend this way just because of where shoulders are naturally sort of neutral and relaxed. But the bigger that you get, the more like sort of wider you get, the more your arm path is gonna move more out to in naturally again, as opposed to straight up and down with gravity. So again, gravity goes up and down this way. If I were to sort of bend my arm this way as straight as I possibly could, number one, I would be in a neutral position at, at, at the forearm. But number two, I would also still be slightly inward to outward. So the barbell is gonna not only force you into that palm up position, Position, that supinated position, but also a path that is fixed upward to downward. So if I just sort of naturally curl the barbell, what you'll probably notice if you look closely is you can actually see my elbows drifting outward as I curl up. And again, that's because that's their sort of, I'll just put this here, their neutral position where at the shoulder, at least there aren't these sort of forces that are trying to sort of tug my shoulder in different directions as I go through the curl, right? Because remember the biceps does cross the shoulder. So when it contracts, there will be forces at the shoulder, but kind of a tangent. If we look at the barbell and we wanted to say, okay, well, let's make this a little better. Let's not create too much rotation at the elbow. You could hinge over and sort of right, like reach your arms forward and create a path that was a little bit more in line with where the barbell was moving you. But why would you do that if you could just grab a cable, right? Where in this case, I can basically angle the cable wherever I want, put the cable wherever I want in relationship to my body, where I can actually align that path of motion so that the cable moves outward and inward with my body, right? So in the barbell variation, I had to kind of squeeze my elbows in and at the, you know, at certain point also just sort of reach over, hinge over and bend my elbows straight up and down this way. And by the way, like a little bit of discomfort already from just doing that with a few reps with the bar. You could just step over to the cable, line the cable up so that it moves exactly where your elbow naturally would, and then do the curls from there. Now, if you didn't have access to a cable and you wanted to use a dumbbell, of course you could do it standing up, right? Like pretend I have two dumbbells and you could do the curls, you know, two arms at the same time. Probably be a little bit easier on the shoulder if you did them in the, in the sort of hammer position, because even most people, when they do get supinated or they do get sort of palm up with the hand, it's a little bit wonky on the shoulders. Um, you know, even if it's just like a, a lighter weight, eventually I find that with clients, it usually gets to a point where dumbbell curls, regular standing are not the best. So you could do something similar where you do hinge forward, allow your shoulder to naturally sort of slump so that the path of your elbow can be vertical with that weight, right? You could do this with a dumbbell, we, whereas you really couldn't with the barbell, right? Cause you can't really rotate your shoulder in and move your arm this way. But with a dumbbell, you do have the freedom to do that. And if you don't want to do that and you don't want to look weird doing like curls like this, you can use a preacher bench, you can use a regular bench as a preacher sort of uh, support, or if you still wanna do them standing and you wanna do it more vertically, you could just hinge over and sort of do it one arm this way, right? So notice that the common theme here is basically that we're just trying to line up the path of motion of the weight with where the upper arm is naturally wanting to sit so that there are no extra forces at the shoulder that we really have to deal with. And then after that, we're just making sure that the weight is in line with where the elbow is moving, right? So again, my elbows were sort of naturally moving this way when I was in that supinated position. So all I did was I put a load basically where, you know, that elbow path naturally would be, boom, and I do curls that way. Obviously, there are a lot of different curling variations that you can do, right? Like you can put a cable up high and do a curl up here. You can put a cable over here and do a curl that way. Like infinite number of possibilities once you have the loading direction in the position that you want down, right? But again, the barbell implement naturally standing here, the most I can turn my palms up is sort of facing that way, 
right? And so uh, given that the barbell is just a free way to implement, it's just gonna fall straight down. So that loading direction would be this way and my arm path would be in to out. And again, those two things don't match up. You could in the short term deal with some consequences or in the long term deal with some consequences. It really just depends on who you are, your structure, how you're different, you know, what your tolerances are and so on and so forth. So again, barbell curl, not a great option, but again, you do have dumbbell options and you do have cable options. Now, if you really wanted to take this to the next level and you only had a barbell, like you literally had nothing else to curl, what I would do is maybe just organize this like a landmine attachment. I haven't really seen many people do this, but you could literally grab one side and do it this way. And although, you know, it's not the best option and you uh, do have a sort of uh, fixed implement with grabbing the end of the bar, at least you could put weight here and at least you could sort of finagle your way around so that you still do have something to curl um, as opposed to sort of having to, you know, fit yourself, squeeze yourself into that position, grabbing two arms at the same time uh, or, or with two hands at the same time rather, which again may lead to some consequences a little bit you know, early on in the process as I've already sort of shown in my own little elbow here. So hopefully that video uh, was helpful for you guys and girls. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.